Okay, so we're going to uh, resume here. Okay, we're talking more about our composition of functions, and we're going to talk specifically about um, the domain of the composition of functions. Uh, we're going to determine that by by looking at the graphs of the compositions. Uh, ain't it with our calculator? Okay, so let's take a look at these two functions. Uh, f of x equals x squared plus 1, and g of x is root x. And we're going to say, what is the composition of f of g of x? Okay? So uh, that would suggest um, that g of x, the square root of x, is being placed in here uh, as the x. And uh, doing that results in, okay, um, the absolute value of x plus 1. And you say, well, why is it the absolute value? I thought it just a square root of x squared is x. Well, if you remember, uh, we did define that uh, square root of x as x squared, and you can actually uh, confirm that with your calculator, okay? Uh, but it is the absolute value of x plus 1, okay? So we're after then, okay? Um, and this, this there should be also read the uh, y is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1. Um, this would suggest that the domain of the composition is the domain of the result, resulting. Okay, so in other words, we're saying if this, if the, the, the final uh, result of the composition is y equals the absolute value of x plus 1, then we know by looking at the, the graph of the value, the absolute value of x plus 1, that it can take on all values of x. Uh, but you're going to find that it's really not. Okay, and we're going to look at that. We're going to look at this through our calculator. So here is our um, uh, y1, which is the f uh, function f. y2 is the function g. We're asking our calculator again. y1, just type it in as you see it, uh, uh, of y2 of x. And sure enough, you see this is the graph, and that's exactly what it is. Okay, so... Um, you know, it seems as if there's a little bit more to this, and that's what we need to be looking at. So to to define the domain of the composition, uh, you have to go beyond simply looking at the end result of the composition and weighing in on the domain of that. So so we'll uh, explore that with some uh, some examples, and and we'll actually illustrate that the composition uh, of these two functions, okay. It produces a new function, the domain of which is simply all non-negative numbers, okay? Uh, so let's take a look at this uh, a little further, okay? Um, let's be, here we go, okay? So um, consider these two functions, okay? Uh, the, the x squared plus 1 and g of x equaling the root of x, okay? And let's look at the, the composition g f of x, g f of x, okay, where that is x squared plus 1 going into this, okay, and let's look at that in terms of the domain, okay, so the uh, resulting composition is that, okay, uh, and again we want to look at the domain, okay, now, uh, if we simply look at the uh, resultant composition, okay, then that is x squared plus 1 is underneath a radical, uh, which needs to be positive, okay? So um, x squared plus 1 uh, needs to be positive, and uh, in fact, uh, this is always going to be the positive because that, that is um, and all x values when squared, okay, are positive. Add in 1, they still remain positive. So simply looking at, okay, the end result and weighing in on what the domain is, we, we tend to think it's all... Uh, real numbers from negative to positive infinity, okay? So we're going to say let's confirm this. Uh, the values going into the, com uh, the composite must first pass through f of x. So in other words, we're saying, okay, the composition is g f of x. Our values first went into f of x. And we say, well, what's restricted on going in there? Well, there's nothing restricted on going in there, okay? So there's no limitations on the values going into f of x. Um, and then we say, are there, uh, and there are no limitations on the net composition, that is the radical x squared plus 1. Which so, so we're just going to bear those things in mind. Okay, the graph 
All right, here it is. Here's f of x. Here's g of x. And what we're asking for is the uh, the g f of x composition, as is shown here. And again, it's suggesting that it takes on all values of x, which is to suggest that the uh, uh, the domain of this composition is uh, from negative to positive infinity. Okay, but okay, it, it's um, it's still not confirmed yet how we determine the domain of a composition. So uh, because the, the previous example uh, it led to a, a much different conclusion than this one did. Okay, so we continue to explore this. Okay, all right. So, looking at these two compositions, okay, um, and I apologize, it looks like something got a little in, in here inadvertently, but uh, at any rate, when we took the uh, composition fg of x, it actually produced the absolute value of x plus 1, okay, with this as the domain of the function, okay. Uh, consider the domain g. So, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the that the separate function g, okay, which is the innermost function here, all right, and, um, and if we look at that, we say, yeah, that's all non-negatives as terms of its domain. Then uh, we consider the result of the composition, which is the uh, absolute x plus 1, which is uh, everything, okay? So what's going in as the innermost is uh, restricted to non-negatives, okay, but the end result is producing all numbers. So, which is it? Well, okay, we're going to look at their intersection. So, in other words, we're going to look at the intersection of g of x with the net composition uh, f g of x, okay, which is uh, the, the intersection between everything and the non negatives, which of course is going to be the non negatives, okay. Now we consider the other composition we looked at previously, which was the g f of x. Okay, again, we're going to weigh in on the innermost function, the f of x, in terms of what its domain is, which we should agree uh, is unrestricted from negative to positive infinity. Um, and then we're going to ask, uh, what is the resulting composition, the domain of the resulting composition? Uh, so the square root of x squared plus 1, since x squared plus 1 is always going to be positive, okay, uh, its domain is all numbers, okay, and of course, uh, if we look at their intersection, the intersection of all numbers with all numbers is producing all numbers, so the domain of the composition function is the intersection between the domain of the inner function and the domain of the resulting composite. We'll look at that by means of another example, one last example here. Let's consider these two functions, f and g, okay? 1 over x squared plus 1 and 1 over x minus 1. Uh, determine the domain of the composition of f g of x. Now, we need to consider the, um, the domain of the inner function, g of x which is not going to be defined at 1, and that's the only value. So it's all numbers but 1, okay, as we say here, right? Uh, now, we need to do the composition, okay? And the composition is appearing down here for some reason, so let's go down here, okay? So the composition f g of x, uh, all x's in f are being replaced with the 1 over x minus 1. So 1 over x minus 1, the quantity squared, plus 1, okay? Now, uh, that effectively is a complex fraction, which is 1 divided by that, or 1 times its reciprocal, which appears here. Over 1 makes no difference, and this is the result of our um, composition. Now, we might say, well, okay, look at that. That, if, if now, by our previous assessment, okay, the... Um, the, the domain of the composition is the intersection between, between the innermost function and the net resulting composition. We say, what is the, the domain of this? Well, this is a parabola. has no limitations. So, okay. Um, so, let's see. Okay, we're taking 
uh, the innermost function uh, whose restrictions are uh, are here uh, are everything but one and we're taking that in union with okay everything which will produce just this okay so in other words the the, the intersection between this group and all numbers is simply going to be okay this group so in other words this function uh, the composition the domain of the composition so it's going to be all values but one okay so here are the two functions are put in and here's the result and you say well I, I don't see where it doesn't say a, x can equal one you don't but if you look at the table you'll see that at one the function is undefined okay and that's that's a result of the composition okay so let's um, let's do one more okay and let's take a look at these two functions okay uh, q uh, q of x and p of x and find the domain of q p of x q p of x so that is to say okay uh, what is the domain of the inner function p of x it's all non-negative right okay and then what is the uh, composition so the composition is uh, q p of x okay which we're just for the time being calling function f which would be what four minus the square uh, the uh, the square of the square root of x is which is four minus x four minus absolute x okay I will say well what is the domain of that okay and the domain of that um, uh, the answering the domain of the, the, the we found the domain of the p of x which is all non negatives and the domain of of this expression is everything okay from negative to positive infinity so now we consider what is the intersection between the domain of the innermost function p of x with the net result and that intersection is simply all the non negatives okay and I asked to calculate a graph, and sure enough, okay, if we were simply asking to calculate a graph for minus absolute value of x, it would look like this and also uh, reflected across the y axis. But since it, it was the result of a sequence of compositions, okay, the domain of the composition is, okay, the, uh, the intersection between the domain of the inner function and the domain of the resultant okay and so that ends this series okay uh, you'll have some practice problems and hopefully uh, uh, get a better understanding through them okay